There we go. All, All right. right. Hey, Dan, it's always great as always to see you. And, um, you know, Alabama, Texas coming up, two of the most premier programs in college football. And, you know, Alabama, big favorites. Um, but when you were playing for Texas, you lined up against Nebraska in the 1996 Big 12 championship game. Nebraska, huge favorites. And um, they were back-to-back national champions and hadn't lost that year yet. You guys came in at 7-4. and four, um, But you guys still ended up winning that game. What does it take a, a huge underdog to beat a, you know, a powerhouse team like Alabama or Nebraska? Well, one advantage Texas has is they're at home. Uh, that, that Big 12 championship game was technically a neutral site, although it was in St. Louis, Missouri, and Nebraska traveled really well. They had bought their tickets to that game as soon as the game was announced earlier in the year, and not one Texas fan had bought tickets until we made it to the game. <laughs> so uh, we were definitely uh, the visitors in that situation. But being at home is a big help. Um, it's just easier to function, communicate, do the things you need to do. Uh, that's where the, the crowd and the, the crowd noise uh, affects the visiting team is just trying to get a playoff and, and function and communicate. And it, it is difficult. So that's the one thing. The other thing about it is just, you know, I, I, I want to say it was um, – the coach of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team, I can't think of his name. Herb Brooks. Herb, Herb Brooks. He said something along the lines of nine to ten times they're going to beat us, but we just need that one time. And, and that's about right. I mean, you know, in any given Sunday or even getting Saturday, it's what makes college or football and pros and the playoffs so exciting, the pros is you just don't know. I mean, a turnover here, a mistake there, and all of a sudden you lose a football game. So you know, it goes back to the saying, you know, anything can happen in the football game because it's just one game, winner take all. And, and you know, it makes it exciting. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things uh, for you guys that was huge was when you went for it on fourth and short, <laughs> late in the game, throwing a long pass that nobody expected. Um, James Brown completing that pass what do you what do you remember about that play in the play call because that was really risky uh, oh yeah it, it was it was thrown to Derek Lewis who caught it and went down about the two or three yard line um you know I think it was fourth and inches right and mm-hmm. we were down in our end maybe in the 40 35 so in that area and I not much time left but enough time for Nebraska to score and win the game uh we were actually leading at the time and we, we, you know, hey, let's go for it. You know, we're, we're the underdog. got nothing to lose. Let's just put this game away with a first down pretty much. And they call – we're in the huddle, and James comes in there and calls that, you know, whatever, roll pass left, whatever it's called. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We're throwing the football. Run the day. We'd run all over them that day. Priest Holmes had a hell of a day. Like, we're, run the football. That uh, shows you what I know, right? We did. We ran that roll pass, and Derek was wide open because the middle backer stepped up for the run, and he caught it. And you could see him as he's running down the sideline. He's watching the video of this on the, the at the top of the stadium. He sees the Nebraska guy about to catch him. You can see him wrap it up and go down. He's like, "I'm not fumbling this football." <laughs> and we actually scored on the next play, and that was the game. And that was the game, and that was a that was a big upset. And um, what do you think Texas's game plan uh, would have to be to upset Alabama this week? Oh, I, I don't think, you, you know, people are going to sit here all week and dissect, you know, well, we match up great with their linebackers or our corners or did real well against third. This is a second game of the year for both teams. A lot of this is going to be based on what they did last year. Well, that's not even the same team. It's a different team this year. And we're basing it off of, we played Louisiana Monroe, and, and I, I don't even know who Alabama played. Um, it, it's it's not a real judge of either team. We're going to find out Saturday, but that's the thing. We just don't know, in my opinion, with either team. So what's it take to beat a team like Alabama is you got to believe you can beat them. 
you got to deep down believe it because if you don't, the first time they punch you in the mouth and do something, you're going to sit there and say, all right, man, we're supposed to lose. Here we go. Versus no matter what happens, no matter what goes on, I truly believe we're going to win this game. And kind of going back to that Nebraska, Texas game, James Brown famously said before that game that, you know, I think we're going to win by 21. Well, he got in a lot of trouble because that was considered bulletin board material because we were 21 point underdogs. And McAfee told James, you got to go talk to the team about what you said. And James walked in that locker room and said, I said, I think we're going to win by 21 because I think we're going to win by 21. You know, and that's what we <laughs> needed. We all jumped up and said, hell yeah, we are. You know, that was like, <laughs> That belief, you know, and, and James, we knew he didn't say unless he believed it. So you got to you got to believe you can do it. And that's kind of hard to do if you haven't done it before. But you got guys out there that are very talented. You got young guys, new guys, you know, a big play, something going your way early. And you start to say you start to build that belief. So, I mean, it, it's going to be a tough game. A lot of things got to go your way. You can't make very many mistakes in a game like this, uh, but it can certainly happen. You, you know, you and I, we, we talk when we talk a lot, we, we like to talk about leadership and, and team culture. Um, how much of that culture and leadership uh, is there already in place at the beginning of the season and how much can be, built up and defined in a game like this, either positively or negatively? Well, you know, a game like this, all games, but big games are more magnified. Is You talk about games like this is where the playmakers step up, right? Guys on that team, both offense and defense, have to make plays. You need a turnover. You need a big completion on third and three. I watched the LSU-Florida State game uh, Saturday night, which I'm sure a lot of the people watching did as well. Florida State had a playmaker that blocked a kick at the end of the game to finish the damn game, right? You find out who those guys are in these type of games, and you need those guys to win these type of games. But to your point, I I don't want to you know gloss over the culture side of it. I thought it was very interesting if you look at this Texas football team you know, Sarkeesian and Bijan Robinson, the two I heard mention it, but I'm sure others have spoke about it, how there was just simply some bad guys on the team last year and they needed to go and they're not here now. And the, the culture and the attitude's different. And that's what gets me most excited about this season. You can talk all you want about rookies or freshmen and all this other junk. And you start talking about there's a change in culture because we who look at those things know that that's been a problem with Texas. Now I start to believe that maybe this thing's headed in the right direction. Yeah, and I, I ended up going to the uh, Houston UTSA game last week, which was another game that, that went down to the wire. Yeah, it was an exciting game, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a great game. And, um, you know, after after the game, both uh, Clayton Toon, the quarterback, and Nathaniel Dell, the receiver, they both said that the overall – message when they were down 21 seven was don't panic Mm -hmm. and that's kind of their their culture and their identity um and um you know that that got them through because a lot of teams you know can fold up on the road in a tough environment oh yeah down 21 seven well and michael that's part of it you know you can say hey don't panic but you also got to believe that there's someone on your team that's capable of getting 14 points or some people you know that we are capable of doing this um and and obviously houston believed that they were and did it but they didn't panic and that they lost faith they they had faith in themselves and their teammates and what they're capable of doing now you were uh, you were an Outland Trophy finalist in 1996, and uh, I've been kind of prepping listeners and viewers about the Outland Trophy and already telling them who to watch for. Uh, and I pointed out Paris Johnson from Ohio State and Peter Skaronsky from Northwestern and Jalen Carter from Georgia. Is there anybody on your radar right now? You, you know, I, I probably haven't focused enough on it. You know, um, 
uh, Lombardi is, you know, both O line and D line, Outland's O line. And so I, I did watch a little bit of the guy at Northwestern. He's a, a fine player. I, I wouldn't even be giving you justice if I told you, you know, who is on my watch list. Cause I, I kind of, I'm not as tuned in as I used to be. Honestly, I, I watch a game and I, I definitely know when there's a good offensive lineman to look at and I'll watch that guy. But I haven't watched all these guys as of yet. I kind of watch them through the year. But I know the names of guys that are kind of being considered, and I keep an eye on them when they're playing. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that that kind of that kind of sets this up pretty well. Um, Alabama has a – You play guard, and Alabama yeah. has has an Outland Trophy watch list member at guard, Emil Ekior. He's number fifty-five. What what should fans be watching from him about what what he should be doing during this game uh, at the guard position? Well, you know the the thing that you know what I look for when I I watch a player first and foremost are their feet. Can they move well? Do they look athletic? It's really prominent at the tackle position. Guards a little bit harder to see. But I want to see, can they move well? Do I want to see if they can pick up twists? Do I want to see if they can get to the second level and the linebacker clean? Uh, do they know what they're doing? You know, to give you an example, and it's probably not fair. It's not fair to, you know, 55 at Alabama. But, you know, I watched Quentin Nelson at Notre Dame, and I watched him for three plays and said, that is one amazing football player. Uh, it's not hard to tell when you see a guy like that level um, when they're really good. And that's kind of what I said. When I watch the game in Alabama, that's certainly what I'll watch. I also I, – I just saw a clip of the game that they played Saturday, and it looked to me like the guy that played right guard for him, I think it was 66 maybe, looked like an athletic skinny guy, which I get all excited about. You know, hey, we're actually going to have an athlete instead of some fat slow guy playing offensive line. So, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I just saw it. Maybe he was a backup. I don't know. But those are the things I look at. I get all excited. Let's see if we can see some guy – you know, playing the offensive line that's a that's a good athlete, not just fat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's also first week of uh, NFL, and you know you had a fantastic career with the Broncos. Um, Broncos have you know Russell Wilson this year, um, and that AFC West to me is, I think, what I'm most excited about as far as a division in the yeah. NFL this year. What do, what do you see going out in with the Broncos and the AFC West? Oh, uh, what a great question! I'll, I'll I'll say this: so when you talk about conferences in the NFL, to me, hands down, the two best, and this is biased, so the AFC West, because all four teams playing in that conference have been playing each other since the beginning of time, and the other one is the NFC North. All four of the, oh, those teams have been playing against each other since before the beginning of time. <laughs> so it's just really when you get those old school rivalries that they've been going on forever, and that is the AFC West. It's really great fun, great football. And it's also kind of interesting. And, it, you know, if, it, it, the way you have to remember the NFL mindset of a football player is the one thing I have to do is win my conference. I win my conference, I'm in the playoffs. I don't care what I do or everything else. I just got to win my conference. Division. That's your, I'm sorry? No, it's your division. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I win my division. I win my division, I'm in. Uh, and so that's your focus. But it always seems like the divisions are always loaded or they're really bad. It seems like there's not any parity or there, there's not any, any other. It's extremes. And AFC West is freaking loaded. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it, I mean, you remember yeah. two of those teams were playoff teams last year in the Raiders and Chiefs. Uh, San Diego, or excuse me, L.A. was on the cusp, I think. They just got knocked out. Maybe by the Raiders got knocked out of the playoffs Yeah, last they year. did, yeah. That was it, right? And, you know, the, the Chiefs are the, the perennial favorites, but they kind of look like maybe they're gettable this year. They've lost a couple guys, uh, you know, and there's a changeover. And then the Denver has gone out and made some really great moves. They got themselves a quarterback, and they've made some other good personnel moves. And, hope, I mean, what you hear is on the defense side of the ball, they're really good. So it, it's going to be a dogfight. You know, you just you got to find a way to win it. And really the formula for winning your division is you must absolutely have to win your home division games. You cannot lose those. And then the other one is you've got to steal one or two on the road. We used to always say division road win was like winning two games. Because right there, now you're in position to win the thing. 
but you got to do those things. So the, keep an eye out as you watch football and you watch division games, knowing in the player's mind, those are huge games. So, yeah, so the Steelers are at Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, it's a huge game. They, they're they thinking we can steal one on the road in Cincinnati. Now we got a two-game lead in our in our division. And you guys, it, now, now back back in your day, you know, and it still is. I mean, it's the the AFC West is the original AFL. Yeah, all West. all original AFL teams. All original AFL teams. Yep. When you guys were playing, the Raiders, the Chiefs, the uh, the Chargers, you know, did was there one out of those that was was kind of nastier than the other or or was it all pretty nasty <laughs> it was it was all a little nasty i would say probably in denver the two big ones are the raiders and chiefs uh you know the raiders had their heyday where they were a great franchise with madden in, in their day and the broncos struggled at that time so that kind of ingrained some hatred amongst the fans and then the chiefs were good early on as well and and Again, the Broncos struggled early on, and so, and they're not too far away. They're just down the road, right? So there's there's not a lot of love lost there. The Chargers really had that that time with Eric Coriel and Fouts where they were good, and, and outside of that, they haven't been as good. So they haven't been as big of a threat to Denver. Uh, but out of all those teams, the one with the most Super Bowl appearances is the Broncos. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but so you know that's what makes it so good, right? They, they've all had their times, and it kind of right now it feels like they're all good. So it'll be some exciting football. It, it will be. I'm, I'm super excited about it. What? What? Um. How? How do the those pro rivalries that were so great in Denver? How do they compare with the Texas versus Oklahoma? Yeah. Texas A and M. They're different. That's a good question. That they're different, right? For the fans, the pro rivalries are a big deal. Like, give me some fans like I hate the Raiders, and you're kind of like, yeah, I want to win. I want to beat the Raiders because it. It means winning and going to the playoffs because that's kind of what you're really focused on. But yeah, I'd go play for them if they paid me enough money. <laughs> you know, it's it's important for the players to win to reach the playoffs. The fans they almost have that hatred like they do in college. College is totally different. College, you you're just like the fans. I mean, <laughs> I hate OU. All right, I will to the day I die. Nothing to do with the playoffs. Anything. I mean, I want to play those guys. I will never put on crimson. You know, so it's a different, <laughs> different mentality, no question. All right. Well, what do you think? Uh, what do you think is most important for fans to look for in week one? And what, what what was it like for players in week one? Well, week one's kind of that, you know, you get a chance to start out one and oh, we're all one. And one, one, one and oh is a lot better. Uh, you just, you, you start out ahead, right? And, and you see, like you just said, you got you got some divisional games week one, some non-divisional games week one. Most of them are pretty exciting. You know, obviously the NFL knows what they're doing, they're scheduling. Like it's not a coincidence that Denver's going to Seattle week one. That 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 was intentional, but it'll be a fun game to watch. So they're all kind of the storylines, and you get to see that the thing is, is the NFL is 17 weeks, right? That's a marathon. Week one doesn't define you, it just gets you started on the right foot. And guys are excited. You know, it's been a long time since they played a game. They're feeling as good as they're going to feel all year. Uh, they're ready. And so it's uh, it's fun, but you also kind of find out some teams that are ready and some teams that aren't ready. It's pretty evident quickly. So <laughs> that'd be good. All right. <laughs> all right, Dan. Well, thanks. Uh